The Pirate Box is a wireless offline server that can be used to communicate discreetly, chat, and even store files without going over the internet. We'll show you how to use a Raspberry Pi to ensure discrete communication on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. A Pirate Box uses a Raspberry Pi in order to create both a Wi-Fi network and a file server, allowing nearby people to connect and communicate. Now this is cool because the communication never touches the internet. It's a private local network, meaning you can drop files, chat, and do other things without ever touching the actual online network. Now this greatly reduces the risk of spying, which is really cool for people who care about privacy. But if you're looking for discrete communication, you could simply take a Raspberry Pi Zero W, put it under the table at a local coffee shop, and then have something sitting at a bus stop half a, half a block away, be able to upload a file to this and never have any direct communication with them over cellular, Wi-Fi, or any other sort of standard communication that goes over the internet. Now, because it's privately routed, everything kind of stays on the device, which is a cool way of bridging the restrictions of normally needing cables or some other way of communicating that relies on either infrastructure or direct hardware. This can also be applicable in maybe a disaster where you need to communicate photos or other things that would be difficult otherwise to use if you didn't have a cellular or Wi-Fi network in order to bridge the gap. Now, of course, because this creates a Wi-Fi network, you can also feel free to attack it. And all the Wi-Fi hacking skills you've learned won't get you in trouble when you're attacking this particular device because it runs off of your Raspberry Pi, and if you succeed, that's actually a good thing. Now, in order to get started, you'll need any sort of Raspberry Pi that has a wireless card, because the Pi Zero won't be very helpful to you since it can't generate its own Wi-Fi hotspot. Once you have that, you'll need to download the image for the Pirate Box, and then we can begin. Now the very first step will be to download the correct image for your Raspberry Pi. So you can go to the article on Nullbyte and then scroll down and find the link that's appropriate for the Pi hardware that you're using. Now we're going to be using the Raspberry Pi Zero W, so we, we will select this image here and we'll download as a torrent, which I chose to download with transmission. So once that's done, you'll need to extract it because it's a zip file, and inside you'll find a piratebox uh, underscore RPI dot img file which will be loading onto an SD card in order to boot the Raspberry Pi. Now to do this we'll go ahead and open Etcher, select our image here which will be on our desktop the pirate box image and then this is our 16 gigabyte micro SD card that we have plugged in which we will not actually flash right now because it takes a while but when we are ready we can go ahead and click here to flash. Now once that's done, we can go ahead and eject our SD card and we'll be ready to plug it into the Raspberry Pi and get started configuring it and setting it up. Now once you allow some time for your Pi to reboot, you can go to the Wi-Fi and look for a Wi-Fi network that's advertising itself with something related to a pirate box. Now here you can see pirate box share freely, which is exactly what we're looking for. And when we connect, we'll be able to find the interface after we discover the IP address of the actual device. So to find that, we can see we're still associating, but once we're done, we can just type sudo ping. And this should both give us the network range and tell us the IP address of the pirate box. Now here we can already see that we found it, so I'll go ahead and cancel, and we can see it's 192.168.771. So I'm going to go ahead and go a step further and do a service scan with Nmap just to see what all is running on this device. Now, after typing this in, we can do a scan on this particular IP address, and we can see that there is a port 80, port 8080, and a port 22, which means uh, there's SSH open and available on this particular device. And that's all really exciting because we can just go ahead and take this IP address and since there's a port 80 open, we can go into any browser, drop it in, and find ourselves at the actual Pyrebox page. Now we're not actually connected to the internet right now, so this is all hosted on the Raspberry Pi. 
And when we're using the Raspberry Pi Zero W, that's pretty cool because this is just a one inch board. Now there's a number of things available on here and the first you can see is the chat, which allows you to pick a name and type in a message. Oh, and there's my old one. So you can also see that we can upload files. So we can pick something from the desktop and go ahead and upload it just by clicking right here. We can see that there's also some disk usage information. We can see we're currently 71% full. And you should keep in mind that this is on the micro SD card. And you can also go ahead and plug in a larger um, drive to actually increase this, or you can just get a larger SD card. It's really up to you how you want to expand it. Now you can also see we can do some default text color change, and there's also a section to add a form if you want to, uh, which is an extra thing that you can enable if that's useful to you or if you want to be able to host a community discussion that way. And that's for things that maybe go above and beyond just a simple chat functionality. Now here you can also see the file section, and this is where you can exchange files and upload things, uh, which might be the most useful function of the Pirate Box because it means you can exchange information without the need of infrastructure. Now the range on this is pretty good, and you can see the file that I uploaded from the desktop is available here, and we can kind of get a repository of information that expands as we expand the storage. Um, and the wireless capability is just something that makes it even more handy because we can plug this into a network as well on a Raspberry Pi. Actually, on this one, we could plug it into an adapter and then into another adapter and then into Ethernet and it would actually function perfectly fine over Ethernet as well. So if you just have a whole bunch of Ethernet cables and you wanted to set something up like this, you can go ahead and do that too. But by far, this is most useful as a wireless network because it allows you to do a whole bunch of cool stuff. So now we'll need to go in and change a couple configuration options to make sure that we don't have the default password in place. Now to do that, we'll need to take the IP address we found here, and according to our previous Nmap scan, we have a port 22 open, meaning that SSH is available as a service. We'll type in SSH, and I know that the password here, or the login and password are both alarm. So SSH alarm at, and then the IP address of your pirate box here. Now when I press return, I can see that I have a failed host verification, which is okay because it means that I previously connected to this host before. Now if you do this and you will run into this a lot, it's good to know how to get rid of this message. So let me very quickly show you how to go into nano and eliminate the last line that you need to get rid of, which is the one that ends in 77. So. Once you go ahead and delete this line, you won't run into that error anymore, but generally that's designed to prevent you against someone trying to hijack your connection or snoop on it. Um, so if you see that, do take it seriously, but if you know that you're just trying to reconnect to your Raspberry Pi, then you will see this uh, message all the time, especially if you swap out your SD card. So just keep in mind, if you see that, you should be able to just reconnect by doing that step there. There we go. So. Uh, it'll ask us if we want to accept the fingerprint and we'll type yes to proceed. And then it'll ask us for the password, which again is alarm. Now here we see kind of a checklist of things we need to do in order to get this set up. So let me expand this just a little bit and we can see that, hey, we are logged in and we're remotely connected via SSH to our pirate box. Now we're doing this over the Wi-Fi, so this doesn't need any ethernet or anything to set up. It's a super flexible way of getting started with something like this. So now we can take our first step, which is to change the password by typing P-A-S-S-W-D. And then let's type in the current password, which is alarm. And then a new password, which we'll just make new password. Great. Now, in order to take full advantage of this, we'll need to plug in a USB thumb drive or something like that. And as soon as we plug it in, and it does need to be formatted in FAT format, we can just run this command in order to expand our uh, file system in order to include that as well. That will greatly increase our storage. And in this case, I believe I have something plugged in that might not be the right, uh, let's see. Let's type in the password and see. Uh, it might not be the right file format, but let's take a look and see.
There you go. As you can see, and you might get this as well, if you see this sort of error where you have multiple different partitions that you can use, make sure to uh, format your drive first so that it has one big uh, VFAT partition so that you can go ahead and expand into that as well. But for this uh, demonstration, don't worry about it because provided you've done that first, it should just expand and it does take a little bit of time to do so. So we can also enable uh, a couple other things here, our network time sync. We can enable that on startup. We can also go ahead and enable the discussion board if that's something we want to host. And we can also include a, a UPnP media server, which is super helpful if you want to be able to stream stuff off of this and really cool. So I'm not going to go too far into this because the rest of those are kind of smaller configuration options. What I wanted to show is how you can log into this and start changing stuff around and really start to customize so that people who are using it aren't able to go in and change stuff without your permission. So once you change the default password and you expand the uh, SD card into whatever it is you choose to plug in, which could be a, a hard drive if you want, you can go ahead and reboot the Raspberry Pi and it should be set up according to the way that you uh, specified. And it says, well, you can't do that. Although I do have to note that uh, for not being able to reboot, let's see. There we go. So you just need to sudo it. But uh, this is actually a pretty friendly image to uh, have to unplug. There are a lot of Raspberry Pi images that freak out or really do not enjoy when you pull the power abruptly. So in this case, this image is pretty resistant to just being powered down randomly, and it's not as fragile as, say, Kali Linux is to being corrupted by abruptly powering down. That being said, if you can connect to it and then just type sudo reboot or sudo shutdown now, that's a much more gentle way of shutting it down than just pulling the power. The Pirate Box is a great way of extending the ability to communicate and share files beyond where the traditional grid ends. It's also a wonderful way of using the Raspberry Pi to ensure privacy and make sure that your communications aren't being snooped on. And you can also rely on it to be able to use as both a target and a way of expanding in the event you need to scale this, let's say in a disaster. Now you can always go ahead and plug in a large USB thumb drive in order to expand the capacity so you can withstand a whole lot of information being dropped onto it, or even plug in a hard drive in order to expand it even further, and maybe even use it as a home uh, file server in order to exchange um, amongst your friends or family different files or different things that you want to distribute. Now that's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, I'd love to hear it on my Twitter. We'll see you next time.